Hey, man! Welcome back! Hey guys, I'm glad you can join the Box Ring episode 6. In this one, we are finally creating the Skull Passes. So let's get started. With your navigator, move to the loader section. Under the grounds loader box, you will find the skulls loader box. Zoom in. The first two images we're gonna load are the HDRs. Bring in a loader. Navigate to the HDR folder and choose the RAN suburb 01. Hook it in and bring another loader. This time Studio 8. Move to the right. You can see here we have the skulls, color, normal and glass. So let's bring them in already. Bring in a loader, navigate to the skull folder and choose the skull color. Hook it in and the next loader. This time the normal. Another loader. And finally the gloss. Good, so if you hover over your images, you can see that the images are all 8-bit integer. We need to change that. Yeah. So again, add a change depth node, switch it to 16-bit float, copy it and paste it over. Now over here you can see some bonus material that I might cover later. Bonus, man! Bonus! Bonus! Like bonus. Yeah, bonus is good for you. Okay, let's start creating our first pass. We will need all of these wireless nodes here, so copy them, then grab the navigator and move over to this area. So click on an empty area and then Control shift v to paste in an instance. Now here you can see there's a HDRI box. Here we place our HDRI maps. Then put the skull maps into the corresponding boxes. Be careful, don't confuse yeah. them. Okay, zoom out. Great, move down to these red boxes. And you know by now these are for 3D wireless nodes. So if you zoom in more, you can see it says scene and at the bottom scene leaves. So we want to gather our scene now for that we need the camera, the ground, the skull, the stones and the leaves. Okay, copy them and move back to our scene box. Click on an empty area. So control shift V and let's get them sorted. Don't, don't forget to click on an empty area first because otherwise you will end up pasting your stuff somewhere in your flow. Yeah. Yeah. Right yeah. So first the yeah. camera, put it in here, this is the ground displaced, the leaf scatter belongs down here, skull out up here, stones as well, and the leaves animated down here, and let's clean this up a bit. So we have all our objects and 2D wireless nodes that we need to create our passes. And the first pass is the shadow floor. Well, don't ask me why I call this shadow floor. I don't know. So let's do it. Let's bring our scene together. Drop in a merge 3D. And now put the camera together with the ground and hook them in together. The stones and the ground, we want to be matte objects. That's why we use a separate Merge 3D. You can copy this Merge over if you like. Hook them objects in and drop in an Override 3D. Let's view this. Yeah. Hook the Override into the Merge 3D. At the moment nothing is happening. So go ahead, select yeah. the Override 3D and then here where it says Met, check Do Met and then check Is Met. Is Met? Is Met? Is Met. Hmm? I think my Turkish friend is called like that. 
now our ground and stones became matte objects. If you can't see the ground at all, right click in your viewport and in 3D options check yeah. show matte objects. You don't have to, you still see the effect. Let me show you. Yeah. See how the invisible ground covers the skull here? I recommend to leave this on though, it's up to you man. So next we're gonna bring the leaves together with our ground using a Merge 3D. No, maybe, maybe it was Meraba. Hmm. Well, I don't know. Alt click to create a router here. View the Merge 3D. So since most passes require the ground to stones to be matte objects, I have converted them to matte objects right here inside the scene box. However, for the first pass, we don't want them to be mats. So how can we do this? Let me show you. Add one more override 3D here. Shift insert it here. Now if you check do mat here, but leave is mat unchecked, we basically override or reverse the effect. Now bring in a render 3D. I'm gonna display this as a big tile. And let's place this into this box. As you might know by now, every time we want to use soft shadows, you will need a software renderer. For now, let's get our pass rendered. What you get at the moment is a white image. In the renderer, activate lighting shadows. Then swing over to the image tab and set it to 16-bit float. Now it turns black because we have no lights yet. So let's create one right away. Know that the spotlight is the only light currently able to cast shadows in Fusion. Okay, extend our modifier panel here and uh, with the light selected, swing over to the transformation tab and set these settings. Hey, the Turkish, they have something that is called kebab or döner. It tastes really good. Now you should see something. Let's move to a more interesting frame. For example, frame 80. Itzel Britzel. Mm. Like mm. And let's swing back to the controls. First, let's set the light's color. For the red, I chose 0.469. For the green 0 0.606 and for the blue 0 0.666. Yeah. Set the intensity to 5.257 and set the decay type to Quatrek for a more realistic falloff. Next the decay rate, set it to 0 0.59, the cone angle to 40 and the penumbra angle to 20. Next open the shadow dropdown and set the density to 0.98 to make the shadow a little weaker. The shadow map size will be at 2048 to make it more detailed. Now a very critical parameter is the multiplicative bias. I show you what you can do with it. Come closer man. Yeah. Hey, is it come closer, man? Now if you zoom in closer to our shadow. Closer man. Closer. You can see that there is a big gap, even though the skull is touching the ground. So this is where the multiplicative parameter comes in. Let's change this to 2.4. And watch what happens. Oh, the gap disappeared! Shut up, you scumbag! I need to focus! Okay, but now um, we have this hole here, which is... Not an arrow, but because the ring has a hole, of course the shadow also has a hole. However, I didn't like it and I decided to close it. I will do that in a moment. For now, let's finish the shadow settings. And since we want soft shadows, we need to change the softness type here. I usually choose constant. I set the softness value to 0 0.0075. Well, maybe it's too soft, so perhaps let's set this to 0 0.005. Okay, so now what we have here is not a shadow pass. 
because as you can see this image does not only contain the directly casted shadows of the ring but also the indirect shadows and even highlights so a complete shading but later on we want to multiply this on top of our composite so what we want are actually the directly cast shadows of the skull in the best case i'm going to show you a trick how you can create the shadow pass add a replace material and shift insert it here go to the material tab and uncheck the receive lighting remember this works only with the software renderer now this looks more like something we can multiply on later so now let's improve our skull shadow in order to close the shadow hole we can simply add an invisible sphere inside the ring hole yeah you knew it i know i know so bring in a shape 3d change it to sphere and let's already set the right values here i am going to rename this to shadow ball first then change the radius to 0 0.166 swing over to the transformation tab okay logically we want the sphere to be inside the skull throughout the whole animation but the skull is animated so we don't want to animate the sphere by hand because we are i don't know about you but i am so what can we do to make our life easier we can link the position of the sphere to the position of the skull, of course. So let's go back to the skull, select it, swing over to the transformation tab and go back to the shadow ball. Now control select the shadow ball. Okay, in case Fusion doesn't allow you to open multiple panels here on the right, make sure to go to the preferences and under global and default settings in the user interface section make sure to uncheck the auto control close tools and the auto control close modifiers alternatively you can also use the pin here at the top now you can see that in the modifier panel we have the settings of both objects open now in the shadow ball settings right click on the x offset and choose expression by doing so you will get this plus here click and hold drag and while dragging usually you should see a line which you don't see now and i don't know why um, but you should see it so drag onto the x offset of the skull and as soon as you release you will get an expression put into the shadow balls value box now do the same for the y and the z offset Okay, everything should be linked up correctly. Let's check this. Bring in a Merge 3D and hook everything together. Well, yeah, the Shadow Ball at the moment is too big, so let's change that. And uh, select the Shadow Ball and go down to the scale, which uh, we set to 0.275. It's looking good as far as it concerns the shadows. However, we have this black sphere here now, which is not good. What do you think? How can we get rid of this black splotch without losing the shadows? Yeah, you know, of course. Go to the material tab and the only thing you have to do now is reduce the opacity here to zero. And now check this out. Bang! How cool is that? Okay guys, first pass done, as always, awesome job. My name is Vito, I'll see you soon, until then, enjoy what you're doing. Yo ho ho, 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 yo